Okay, hopefully by now you've nailed down all the names for the functional groups and you'd be completely comfortable picking them out, naming them, if someone were to give you a structure with any amount of functional groups in it. Just make sure you know how to talk the talk because no one's going to trust you to walk the walk if you can't. Okay, so let's talk a quick introduction regarding alkanes, alright? So remember, alkanes are completely saturated molecules. They only have carbon-carbon single bonds, and any other bond that a carbon will make is between itself and a hydrogen, right? That's what we mean by something being saturated, is that there are no double bonds, there are no triple bonds, it's just carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so really the only thing I want to talk about in this video is how to rank boiling points and melting points of alkanes if you were given a certain number of them and you are asked to rank them. Okay, so I'm going to quickly draw a couple structures and then we'll talk about it. First we're going to hammer down boiling points. Okay, and then we'll draw one more. Okay, so boiling points are basically determined by a few factors. We're talking about intermolecular forces here, right? The molecules with the strongest intermolecular forces will have the strong, strongest boiling points. Because remember, boiling points are, you have to keep jacking up the temperature until you break up a given mixture of a molecule's intermolecular forces to the point where you can force it out of the liquid phase and into the gas phase, right? So the first thing you're going to look for when we're dealing with just alkanes, the only intermolecular forces force present are dispersion forces. So what you're looking for first and foremost is the molecule with the highest number of carbons, aka the, the highest molecular weight. The heaviest molecule is going to have the highest boiling point. So if we look at the structures I've drawn here, we have a carbon with one, two, three, four, five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and one, two, three, four, five. So clearly, if we're going to rank these between one and three, and we're going to give three the highest, that means right here, this carbon right here, a six carbon chain, that would be hexane, he gets the highest boiling point. Okay, so now what do we do, right? We have a little bit of a tie here with these two five carbon chains. This is a complete straight chain, and this is slightly branched, right? There's not five in a row, there's four, and a branch coming off right here. So here's kind of how you go about this. So dispersion forces are stronger when there's more surface area, right? The molecules can stack and get close to each other. That means the dispersion forces get stronger. So if you ever have a tie as far as molecular weight is concerned, what you do then is you look for the straight chain molecules and they get the highest boiling points. So because this pentane is not branched at all and this guy is, who also has five carbons, we're gonna give pentane the second highest boiling point and this guy over here is dead last coming in at one because he is less stackable and the, sur the surface area there between the molecules is less than the straight chain, so he gets the lowest boiling point. Not too bad, right? So remember, look for the highest molecular weight molecule. He gets the highest. If there's ever a tie, go with the straight chain and make sure the branched structures come last. All right, so that was boiling point. It's really not hard at all. Now let's talk about melting point super quick, and then we'll get into some common naming. Okay. So melting point is a slightly different. So again, still depends on molecular forces, but there's a little bit of a twist. Okay, so let's look at something like this. I'm going to give you these three structures. Again, we're going to assign the highest melting point as three, lowest being one. Okay, so again, you're going to try and find the largest molecule, and you're going to give them the highest boiling point. So in this case, we have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so clearly this guy is going to be the lowest melting point. So he gets a one. But now we have a little bit of tie for first and second, right? So what do we do? And here's where there's a little trick. So melting point actually does not depend on surface area. It actually depends on kind of the ability to pack together. And believe it or not, branching actually allows molecules to become spherical and kind of get all bunched together, not in the way that you would stack for boiling point. So if there's ever branching and there's a tie between molecular weight, go with the branched molecule. It sounds weird and not intuitive, but trust me on this one. So we would give this guy a three, 
and that guy over there too. So remember, boiling point, go with the heaviest molecule, and if there's branching and a tie between weights, go with straight chain. However, when it comes to melting point, you go with the heaviest molecule. However, if there's a tie, go with branching. All right, that's just a little peek into alkanes, but let's get into naming. Let's figure out, okay, if I give you some type of structure, how do you name it? All right, let's get to it.